Theta and alpha. Okay. All right. I'll I'll elaborate in the I'll elaborate today. And uh, if you remember, I said that when we do applications of theta and alpha, that is when you will have a better understanding. Okay. Here. Anyway, let's start. Let's uh, like I said, let's pick up from where we left off. So basically, in the last class, we learned about theta and alpha. Now, what I want you guys to keep in mind is this: that the primary purpose of theta and alpha. In fact, let me ask you guys: what is the primary purpose of theta and alpha? Where where exactly? are we going to use it? Although we haven't uh, done a lot of examples as yet, but I'm sure you by now have some idea as to where we're going to use it. So anyone who'd like to answer that question, where exactly are we going to use theta and alpha? Yeah, exactly. So basically we're gonna use theta and alpha to find out uh, to solve trigonometric equations. Okay, so I want you to keep that in mind always that theta and alpha are basically two angles that we're going to use in order to solve trigonometric equations. Okay, now there are some properties that you have to remember. Okay, one is the basic angle. So basic angle, what are the properties? It's always positive, always acute and always made, always measured from the horizontal axis. Okay, now, now that we have done one example of trigonometric equations, we know how or where exactly we're going to draw it. How can angle be negative? Okay, I'll come to that, I'll come to that. So we know exactly where we're going to draw it. Okay, so alpha, we will first see what quadrant we are in and how will we decide what quadrant we are in? We will look at if the trigonometric uh, function is positive or negative. If it's positive, we'll draw it in the positive quadrant. If it's negative, we'll draw it in the negative quadrant. We're gonna do more examples, so don't worry about it just yet. Okay, so these are the three properties of alpha. And through alpha, what we do is we measure theta. We calculate theta, not measure. Measure means doing it like for, uh, with an instrument, but we calculate alpha. We calculate theta or x. Now, what are the properties of theta? The properties of theta is that it's always measured from the positive horizontal axis, okay? So the starting point of theta is fixed. It's this point right here. If it is positive, that means it is going to be measured in an anti-clockwise direction. If it's negative, that means it's going to be measured in a clockwise direction. So to answer your question, how can an angle be negative? That is if you are measuring it in a clockwise direction, okay? And how will we decide whether we have to measure it in a clockwise or an anti-clockwise direction? By looking at the range of theta, okay? So we just did one question where we solved a trigonometric equation where is it where is it yeah here it is so if you look at the range of x or theta you can see that it's positive that means we're going to measure it in an anti-clockwise direction okay so like i said this is uh, this was just one example uh, today i plan on doing lots of examples of trigonometric equations so you guys get used to it okay so example number two how do you know we we will have four answers. Okay, that depends on the range. That depends on the range. The range will tell us that how many answers we have. Let me do some more examples. Okay, yeah. So as I was saying, let's say that you're given cos x equals to minus 0 0.5, okay? And the range that you're given is from zero to 360. Okay, x is greater than or equal to zero lesser than or equal to 360. Okay, let's say this is what the question says. All right, now, if you remember, I explained this in the last class that why do we need a range? Why do we need a range? What if the, what do you think will happen if the question didn't give us a range? Yeah, there will be infinite number of solutions. Okay, now we need to find out how many solutions we have within zero to 360, okay? So basically what we need to know is, we need to know when exactly is cos x equal to minus 0 0.5 between zero and 360. Okay, so let's have a look at the graph as well so that you guys know exactly what we're doing. So we need to find out when is y equal to cos x equal to minus 0 0.5. So y equals to cos x, this is what it looks like. Let's change this to degrees. Let's change it to zero, 360, 360. There you go. Okay, then y equals to minus 0 0.5. All right, so what we need to do is we need to find out when exactly is cos x equal to minus 0 0.5. Now the graph that you're looking at in red is basically the graph of cos x and the graph that you're looking at in 
Uh, just a minute. Let me change this to two and minus two. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So you can see that it's equal to minus 0 0.5 at two points. Okay. One is this. Okay. And the other is this. And that's it. Okay. Because this is where it ends. It is again equal to minus 0 0.5, but that is outside of a range. That is outside of 360. It's 480 and 600. Okay. Now, so first of all, cos is negative. Where can that be? Where can cos be negative? In what two quadrants can cos be negative? Question for you guys. This is the first step, by the way, the second and the fourth. Okay, what's the first step? The first step is determine the possible quadrant. So that means it could be the second or the fourth, second and third. Yeah, second and the third, okay, ASTC. So that means it could be in the second or it could be in the third quadrant, okay? What's step two? Step two is that we find alpha. How exactly are we gonna find alpha? We're gonna do cos inverse, okay? And when we're doing cos inverse, we're gonna do cos inverse of 0 0.5, okay? Not cos inverse of minus 0 0.5, cos inverse of 0 0.5. So what is cos inverse of 0 0.5? Let's see, cos inverse of 0 0.5. So we're looking at 60 degrees. Okay, so that means this is 60 and this is 60. So here's zero, here's 90, here's 180, here's 270 and 360. Now it's time to calculate X or theta, okay? Step three. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna start from the positive horizontal axis and we're gonna measure it in, a, in an anti-clockwise direction. How do I know that we should measure it in an anti-clockwise direction? Because of the range that's given to us, okay? So what is this angle going to be? Can anyone tell me what this angle is going to be? And also tell me how you worked it out. This is going to be 120, how so? 180 minus 60, that's correct. So that's one value of X. That is one possible value of X when cos X is minus 0 0.5. What about the other value? 240, how exactly are we gonna figure that out? 180 plus 60, so that is 240 degrees. How is range telling you the direction? Okay, the range is telling me the direction because it's positive. Okay, go back to the properties of theta. What, how do you measure it if it's positive? How do you measure it if it's positive? You measure it in a anti-clockwise direction. Okay, what if it was negative? What if it was from minus 360 to zero? Then we would have measured it in, in a clockwise direction. Okay, don't worry about that. Okay, first uh, we, we're gonna get a good grip on how to solve trigonometric equations with positive range, then we're gonna look into negative range as well. I don't want you to worry about that right now. Okay, so does that answer your question about the range and direction? Okay, great. All right, let's do another question. Okay, we're gonna do lots and lots of questions, so don't worry about that. We're gonna do at least uh, seven, eight example questions before I give you guys questions to solve. How to 40? How no, uh, why not? You tell me, 180 plus 60? What is this angle going to be? 180 up until here, then another 60 degrees, which is 240. Okay, and then let's go back to the graph, see if it makes sense. So our solution says that 120 and 240 are the two values within zero to 360, where cos x is equal to minus 0 0.5. Is that true? Yep, that is true. Okay. So let's, like I said, let's do another question. We're gonna keep on solving till this becomes like a piece of cake for you guys. Let's say you have tan x minus three equal to zero. Now, before we start solving this, there is one additional step that we have to do. What is that? We have to write it nicely, okay? As it is with any equation, you have to first make the unknown the subject, okay? Like for example, if I ask you to solve two to the power x minus seven equals to one, you can't solve this immediately, right? What are you gonna do? What's the first step you're gonna do? You're gonna isolate two power x. Okay, so you're gonna take the seven over to the other side, it's gonna be two power x equals to eight, then you're gonna start solving the way you solve a linear equation, oh sorry, uh, an exponential equation, okay? Yes, uh, that's absolutely correct, what you said. So tan x equals to three is the first step. Okay, now that we've written it nicely, now we can start solving it. So what are, what are we trying to find out over here? We're trying to find out when exactly is tan x equal to three from zero, to 360 degrees, okay? So what is tan here? Tan is positive. So where can that be? Where can tan be positive? In what two quadrants? 
first and third that's correct okay a s t c so this is the first step first step that is figuring out the possible quadrants now can anyone do the second step for me that is can anyone find out alpha very good 71.56 so we're going to lock it at 71.6 71.6 okay now we find out alpha oh sorry now we find out x so the in the first quadrant x is equal to alpha so that means how we know tan is positive look at the equation shayan look at the equation tan x equals to 3 that means tan x equals to positive 3 that's how we know tan is positive how did we know cos is negative in example number 2 because cos x was equal to minus 0 0.5 that's how we knew so 71.6 is one solution what about the other solution yeah how so 180 plus 71.6 is 251.6 uh, 251.6 yeah Okay, so are, do you guys feel like you're getting the hang of it? How do we know tan cos make us figure out alpha? How to tan cos? Okay, I'm not sure I understand that question, Fatma. How do tan cos make us figure out alpha? So you find out alpha by taking the inverse. Okay, so if it's sine equals to something, you take sine inverse. If it's cos equal to something, you take cos inverse. If it's tan equals to something, you take tan inverse. Okay, does that help? Sir, our school teacher says to never round up the angle. So if you do that, will it, no, uh, Angles are supposed to be rounded off correct to one decimal place. It says on the question paper. Okay, don't worry about what will happen if the range is negative. All right, first let's get a good grip on this. Then we will worry about what to do when the range is negative or sometimes we'll even have to alter a range. So we'll do that later. Acha, by the way, let me answer that question uh, about angles. So just open up um, any past paper question. You will see, um, yeah, give non-exact numerical answers correct to three significant figures or one decimal place for angle in degrees. So it says on the question paper, okay. Inverse of cos tan sine is alpha, how come? Okay, hold on to that question, hold on to that question. When we do graphs, you will have a better understanding of it. Okay, when we do the relationship between the alpha of the trigonometric function and theta of the trigonometric, uh, trigonometric function, you'll have a better understanding. Okay. It's like, uh, sir, the answer is 71.56. So he says it should be written as nay, 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 nay. There's no such rule like that. If that is exactly what he said, then I'm afraid that's not the right way to go about it. Because you're rounding off, you're simply rounding off. So 71.56 has to be 71.6. Okay, you'll fo you follow the basic rules of rounding off. Nothing else. Okay, so another question. This question is sine x, in fact, let's say cos x equals to minus, in fact, wait a minute. Let me change it slightly. Let's say you have three cos x plus one equals to zero, okay? And the range that you're given is slightly different, okay? It's not from zero to 360, it's from zero to 180. That means you need to find out when is cos x equal to minus one upon three between zero and 180, okay? So how exactly are we gonna solve this? Well, nothing different as such. The first step remains the same. We're gonna write it nicely. We're gonna make cos x the subject. So cos x equals to minus one upon three. I hope everyone understands what I've done here. Okay, I've shifted one over to the other side and divided by three. So this is what we're looking at. Now cos is negative. Where can that be? Where can cos be negative? The second and the third quadrant. All right, the second and the third quadrant. Okay, pay close attention. So here's zero, here's 90, here's 180, 270, 360. So if cos is negative, that means it could be in the second or the third quadrant. Why is that? That's because of A, S, D, C. 
okay? So let's find out alpha, how? By taking the cos inverse of one upon three, okay? Remember to take the cos inverse of one positive one upon three. So this is what we're looking at. We're looking at 70.52, so we'll just keep it as 70.5. So this is 70.5 and this is 70.5. Okay, now tell me if what I'm doing is correct. So one angle will be 180 minus 70.5. Won't it be cos inverse, three cos inverse, one upon three? Nine, nine, nine. We'll first make cos the subject. Fatma, I think you haven't seen the recording of the last class. Is that the case? Did you watch the entire recording of the last class? And Huzefa, to answer your question, whenever we're calculating alpha, remember the first step, we find alpha by taking the inverse of the positive value. Okay, so whenever we're calculating alpha, we do so by taking the inverse of the positive value, always, okay? That's why we take cos inverse of minus one upon three. Okay, uh, sorry, not minus one upon three, cos inverse of one upon three. So what is alpha equal to? Alpha is equals to 70.5. Now let's find out x. So 180 minus 70.5 is one value, which is gonna give us 109.5 degrees, okay? And the other value will be 180 plus 70.5, which means, yes, Fawaz, that is correct, 250.5. So are we gonna get both the answers? Why not? Yes, because it's out of range. So our range only allowed us to go up till 180, not more than that, okay? So that means what happens to this answer is that we're just not gonna write it. So the only one answer we have is 109.5. So that means between zero and 180, at 109.5 is when three cos x plus one equal to zero, or that is when cos x equal to minus one upon three. Yeah, you can say it's out of your budget. Okay, now let me do one more question and then I will give you guys some questions to solve. Sine x equals to minus 0 0.6, okay? X is in between zero and 360, okay? Now, by the way, by the way, have you guys wondered why can't we just find out the value of x by simply taking sine inverse of minus 0 0.6? What's wrong with that? If I ask you to solve this, you can simply take sine inverse of minus 0 0.6 and find out the value of x. And I think uh, this will answer that question where uh, somebody asked why do we take, the, why do we have to calculate alpha? Something, something like that, okay? So, Yes, so try this out. Try finding out the value of x using your calculator. So if you do that, let me just do it with you guys. Sine inverse of minus 0 0.6. So we get minus 36.86, which if you round off becomes minus 36.9 actually. So what's wrong with this? What is wrong with this? Well, not just the fact that it's negative, okay, technically, it's not wrong, okay? Because if you think about it, if you if you use the graph, let me show you guys. If you use the graph at minus 36.86, whatever this value is, sine x is actually equal to minus 0 0.6, okay? So let me show you. In fact, let's, let's take an easier value. Okay, let's take an easier value. Let's take minus 0 0.5, okay? So this is a separate question, just so that I can explain the concept that I'm trying to right now, so. Let's say you have sine x equal to minus 0 0.5 and the range that you're given is from zero to 360. Okay, now notice what happens. If I take sine inverse of minus 0 0.5, I get x equals to minus 30 degrees. Now this is not wrong, okay? The value of x is not wrong, but there is one major problem with this value. What is that problem? Let's look into it. So y is equals to sine x. This is what it looks like, okay? This is what the graph of sine x equals to look like. Now, what our calculator is giving us is this answer. 
y equals to minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5, yeah. So this is what her calculator is giving us. Her calculator is giving us minus 30, which like I said, it's not wrong. But the thing is, the calculator doesn't have a brain of its own, okay? The calculator doesn't know what is the context of the question. We know the context of the question. Like for example, if you're solving x squared equals to nine, okay? And if you use your calculator to do, uh, to do that, what does your calculator say? You take the square root of nine and your calculator gives you three only, okay? Why? Because the calculator doesn't know exactly what we're trying to do. So whatever the capacity of the calculator is, it's, it's operating within that capacity. So the calculator doesn't know that we are supposed to solve this trigonometric equation within the range zero and 360. So what our calculator does is it, it gives you the closest solution there is, okay? Without taking into consideration whether it's positive or negative, it just gives you the closest solution there is, okay? So that is why we go through this route where we find out alpha, we determine possible quadrants, and then we find out x or theta, whatever it is that we're asked to find, okay? So technically, cos x, uh, sine x equal to minus 0 0.5 at 210 and at 330 degrees, okay? This is where sine x is actually equal to minus 0 0.5. But again, our calculator doesn't know exactly what we're trying to find out, okay? So I hope that helps. Now, what I want you guys to do is, uh, in fact, we decided that, uh, I decided that I'm gonna solve this together, so let's do that. So first things first, determine the possible quadrant, three and four, okay, good job. Because it's negative, that means it has to be in the third and the fourth quadrant. So here we are, the third and the fourth quadrant. Okay, what about alpha? What about alpha? What is alpha going to be? Alpha is going to be sine inverse of 0 0.6. Let's figure that out, sine inverse of 0 0.6. So we're looking at 36.9. So here we have 36.9 and here also we have 36.9. Now let's calculate X. Yep, there you go. So X is equal to 216.9 degrees. Then you have 323.1 degrees. That's it. That's your answer. Here. Now I don't want you guys to solve all of them. So do A alternate, okay, do part A, C, E, and G. And please do not skip a step. If you don't skip a step, then I can guarantee that you are very likely to get it right. But if you skip a step and then you get it wrong, then that's your own fault. Okay, so answer to the first part, 17.5, 162.5 is correct. I'll write it down over here, 17.5 and 162.5. There you go. B63.4, 243.4 is also correct. By the way, you weren't supposed to do part B, but the answer is correct. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, that, that is the answer to part C only. Okay, looks like we have all the answers now. Let me write it down. Uh, part C, okay, I've written the answer to part C already. Part E, 125.5, 305.5 is correct. 125.5 and 305.5. Okay, then we have part G, which is 48.6 and 131.4. Uh, Raviha, you might want to recheck your answer to part G. Sign is positive, not negative. Sign will be positive if you make it the subject. Okay. All right, so I guess I'll wait for what, 30 more seconds and then... Well, I will give you guys some more, more of these, okay? Because these are really important. I wanna make sure you guys get the hang of it. All right, so here are the answers and I uh, hope everyone is starting to get the hang of these questions. Now, like I said, I'm gonna give you guys some more of these. 
So here we are. Very similar to the previous questions. The whole objective is to make sure that you guys uh, practice solving trigonometric equations. This time I'd like you guys to do A alternate again. Okay, <clears throat> let's discuss the answers now. Part A, 56.3 to 36.3 is correct. Okay. 56.3 to 36.3, good job. Part C, let me write down the answer to part C. 45.6, 314.4, Okay, then part E, which is 126.9, 233.1. Then comes part G, which is which is 60 and 300. Yep, that's correct. 60 degrees and 300 degrees. Okay, so I hope you guys are now getting the hang of trigonometric equations. All right. And uh, everyone has been able to get the correct answer. Okay, now, so... In all these trigonometric equations, sir, for E is cos positive or negative? For E cos is... Okay, I think uh, we had this problem before as well. There is a... No, wait a minute. For E cos is negative. Yeah, cos is negative. It's cos x equals to minus 0 0.6, which is why it's going to be in the second and the third quadrant. Okay. All right. So in all these questions, did you notice there was one, although there were a lot of things that were common, but uh, one thing in particular, can you guys identify that? The range? All right. Something to do with the range is what I'm talking about. Something to do with the range. Other than the fact that, yes, the range was in between zero and 360. Other than that, what else did you think? Positive. Okay. That's correct. What else? Something else as well. Think, think. Coefficient of x. All right. Yeah, but like I said, I'm talking about only the range right now. You're right. Coefficient of x is also what was common, but like I said, I'm only talking about the range. Yes, Momin, good job. So basically in all the questions that we have solved, everything was in degrees, okay? The range was in degrees. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna solve exactly the same kind of trigonometric equations, okay? Except this time, we the range that we will be using will be in, not in degree, it will be in radian. Okay, so let me just take out a few questions for that. And then let's practice those. So what are you gonna do for if the if you see that the range is in is not in uh, degree? In fact, it's in radian. What's the first thing? Yes, you're gonna change the mode of your calculator to degree. And I want you to go, to do that immediately. Change the mode of your calculator from degree to radian. While I take out some questions. So everything will remain the same, okay? Everything else will remain exactly the same. There aren't any changes that we're going to do, except that the mode of our calculator will be in radian. So here's a question. I'm gonna solve a few parts so that you guys know what to do. And then you guys can do the rest. Okay, so I'm gonna do part B. Part B is cos x equal to 0 0.5. Now, what is the range? The range is from 0 to 2 pi. Now, cos is positive. So where can that be? That can be in the first or the fourth quadrant. Okay, so A, S, T, C. Now, previously, this was 0. Okay, the starting point was 0. This will still be 0 because it doesn't matter whether it's 0 in degree or 0 in radian. It's 0 is 0. Okay, this used to be 90 degrees, okay? What is 90 going to be in radian? 90 is going to be pi upon two, okay? And this uh, half circle or a straight line previously used to be 180 degrees. Now it's going to be pi. And then three quarters of a circle 
previously used to be 270 degrees now it's going to be 3 upon 2 pi now a good a good thing to do is would be to memorize the radian value of some uh, frequently used angles like you know how we have uh, the decimal values memorized of some fractions or the other way around we know like for example if i ask you guys what is 0.25 in fraction what is the fractional value of 0.25? Yeah, so you guys have this memorized, okay? Now, what will happen if you didn't have this memorized? Nothing really, you can always work it out. You can always convert decimal to fraction using the multiply by 100, divide by 100 rule, but it will save some time, okay? So just like that, if you have these values memorized, it will save you some time. And then a full circle, which is 360, but will now be two pi, okay? So I'll write down some uh, radian values of important angles. So zero is zero, in fact, no point in writing that. 30 degrees is 1 upon 6 pi, 45 degrees is pi upon 4, and then 60 degrees is, can also come in handy. It's going to be 1 upon 3 pi or pi upon 3. So if there is pi, is it always? Yeah, so when you see pi, okay, when you see the range in terms of pi, that means it is in radian, okay? 90 is pi upon 2, and then 180 is pi, something you guys know already. 270 is 3 upon 2 pi, 360 is 2 pi, okay? So having these memorized will save you some time, okay? All right, so we're done with the first step. No, actually we're not done with the first step. We are um, partially done with the first step. We need to identify the quadrants. So the quadrants are going to be the first and the fourth quadrant, okay? So zero is zero, Chayan, zero is zero. So there's no point in writing that down. Now the next step, which is that we find alpha. So how do we find alpha? We'll take cos inverse of 0 0.5. So what's cos inverse of 0 0.5? 1 upon 3 pi. Okay, so that means this is 1 upon 3 pi, and this is 1 upon 3 pi. Now, here's something to watch out for when solving trigonometric equations when the range is in radian mode. If your calculator gives you the answer in terms of pi, that's great, okay? If your calculator does not give you an answer in terms of pi, then don't worry about writing it in terms of pi or don't think that you're doing it wrong. Just keep it in decimal form only, okay? The only answers that you will get in terms of pi are basically values like these, okay? Um, like for example, when we were doing it in uh, degrees, we didn't get all answers in integers, some were decimal. So the answers that you get as integers are the ones can be that, that can be written in terms of pi, okay? That your calculator will give you in terms of pi. Okay, so now that we have alpha figured out, it's one upon three pi, let's calculate three significant figures, okay? So this, although is an angle, but it's not in degrees, so we follow the three significant figure rule. Now let's calculate x. So for the first quadrant, it's going to be the same. It's going to be one upon three pi, okay? For the fourth quadrant, previously we used to do 360 minus alpha. This time we will do two pi minus one upon three pi. So you don't have to worry about writing pi over and over again. Just do two minus one upon three, okay? And then write pi with it or pi next to it. So two minus one upon three is five upon three. And then don't forget to write pi with it, okay? Like in vectors. So for example, in O-level or IGCSE math, if you had to do three upon two A plus five upon three A plus or minus a. So you wouldn't, in your calculator, there's no point in writing a. In fact, you can't do that. So just use the coefficient and then in the end, write the unknown or the constant in this case with it, okay? So nothing different really. I will, however, solve one more question before I give you guys some questions to solve. So I'm gonna, I've done part B, I'm gonna do part D as well. And then I'll give you some questions to solve. So sine x equals to minus 0 0.7. First things first, identify the possible quadrants. So this is this could be in the third or the fourth quadrant. So here's zero, here's pi upon two, here's pi, here's three upon two pi, and here is two pi, okay? So since sine is negative, that means it could be, like I said, the third or the fourth quadrant. Sir, give us some with different range, 360. Uh, not yet, not yet. I will, but not yet. No, Arij, no need to write uh, radian with your answer. It's understood, okay? If the question is already in radian mode, then our answers are also naturally going to be in radian mode, okay? All right, so let's find out alpha. So sine inverse of 0 0.7, positive 0 0.7 is how we'll find alpha. And I just realized my calculator is in degree mode. So don't forget to change it to radian mode. Sine inverse of 0 0.7. So we're looking at 0 0.775. Okay. 
So this is 0 0.775. Now your answer won't be in terms of pi anymore. But because alpha is in decimal, that means the other two angles you get will also be in decimal. So we for the first angle, the angle in the third quadrant, we will do pi plus alpha. So we're looking at 3.916, which means 3.92. And then for the fourth quadrant, we will do 2 pi minus alpha, which means 2 pi minus 0 0.775. So we're looking at 5.508, which we will write as 5.51. Okay, yep, 3.92 and 5.51. Okay, so what are your thoughts? Easy? Difficult? One out of 10, okay. Good to hear that, good to hear that. Sir, can we get a break from the mass? Okay, let's take a five minute break. Let's take a five, six minute break. I just wanna hear your thoughts. Okay, so I'm assuming the rest of you also aren't um, finding this difficult anymore. Initially, yes, understandable, but not anymore. Okay, so let's take a break. And then we, when we come back in five, six minutes, I will give you guys some questions to solve in radian mode. And that's, that's what we're gonna do today. I don't wanna, start a new concept and not do it in detail. Let's do this concept by concept. Okay, trigonometry has a lot of concepts, like I said in the beginning that we're gonna do cover trigonometry in a circular fashion. That is first, we're gonna do some basic equations, then we're gonna do some basic graphs, then we will do some complex graphs, and then we'll come back to some complex equations and that's how it's going to play out. So will we do graph sketching as well? We will not today. Okay, of course we will do graph sketching, but not today. Now, I would prefer that you guys solve these questions after a five minute break. Okay, so that we're all on the same level. I'll leave this here so you guys can have a look. But when we come back, we're gonna do some questions uh, from, we're gonna do um, some parts from this question and then we'll do some other questions as well. Okay, so yeah, let's uh, take a five minute break here. So what I want you guys to do now is I want you guys to solve the following the ones that I'm highlighting, A, A alternate. And do share your answers as you solve them, okay? Not at the end, but as you solve them. Okay, go ahead, share your answer. Uh, yes, so for the A part, it's a 0 0.3047. Mm -hmm, 0 0.305, correct to three significant uh, yeah. figures. And the uh, other one is 2.3369. Yeah. I actually ran it to four significant figures. Okay, well, your answer is correct. Just remember to get into the habit of rounding it off correct to three significant figures. Okay. okay, for the for the C part, it's 1.25. Just a minute, let me just write down the answer to part A. 0 0.305, 2.84. Yeah, go ahead, for part C. For part C, it's 1.25. Mm-hmm, 1.25, correct. 1.9 or 1.89. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. 1.25 is correct, the other answer, incorrect. It's 4.39, good job. See what you've done wrong? For part E, Emma, your answers are correct. 1.89 and 5.03. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys some different equations to solve, okay? I'd like you guys to try it out first. Okay, I'll give you guys two minutes to try and figure it out. If you're able to, that's great. If not, then I will, I, I will be solving it anyway, okay? So I want you guys to try this out. Cos square x minus, cos square x equals to one upon four. All right, and the range is from zero to 360. Okay, so go ahead, try this. I'll give you three minutes to figure this out. Okay, so I'm gonna solve it now. And then you guys can cross check and see if you've done it correctly or not, okay? So what is the first 
first of all, what's the difference in this question? How is it different from all the questions that we have done so far? Question for you guys. Yeah. So it's basically cos square other than the usual cos x, sin x, tan x. Okay. So how do we fix that? How can I get rid of the square? Just take a root on the side. Yep. I can take square root on both sides. And when I do that, what do you think I end up with? Cos x equals to 1 upon 2? If I take the square root on both sides. So let's say... Wait a minute. Sorry. Uh, say that again. Do I end up with cos x equals to 1 upon 2? After taking the square root? Yes. Plus minus. So because you're taking the square root on both sides, you get a plus and minus. Now, what will happen due to the plus and minus? That means now cos x is equal to 1 upon 2 or cos x is also equal to minus 1 upon 2. So that means now you don't want the value of x when cos x is equal to just 1 upon 2, but you also want the value of x, which means where cos x is equal to minus 1 upon 2 as well. So what do you do as a result? You find out alpha, okay? You find out alpha by taking cos inverse. So no matter, uh, irrespective of whether you're solving cos x equals to 1 upon 2 or if you're solving cos x equals to minus 1 upon 2, the way of calculating alpha will remain the same. Okay, so you'll find out alpha by taking cos inverse of 1 upon 2. Make sure to convert your calculator back into uh, degree mode for this one. So cos inverse of 1 upon 2 will give you 60 degrees. Now, if, uh, if we try and determine the quadrants, where do we have cos here? In which quadrant do we have cos here? Do we have it in the first quadrant, the second, the third, or the fourth? No. Not the first and fourth. We have cos, yes, we have cos in all four quadrants, okay? Okay, so cos x equals to positive one upon two. So where will cos be if it's positive? In the first and fourth? Okay, but we also have cos x equals to minus one upon two. So where will cos be if it's negative? So that's the reason why we have cos in all four quadrants now. Okay, so that means how many solutions are we expecting? We're expecting four solutions, okay? Now, again, don't make a blanket rule out of this that whenever it's square, you're gonna get four solutions, okay? We have four solutions because the range is from zero to 360 and because we have cos in all four quadrants, okay? So here's 60, here's 60, here is 60, and here we have 60 as well. So let's start writing down the solutions. X is equals to 60. So why am I getting 75.5 as alpha? I cannot figure it out. Okay, that's interesting. Are you taking cos inverse of one upon four or cos inverse of one upon two? Or yeah, change it to degree. Change it to degree as well, but I think you've done that. So 60 for the first one, then 120, then 180 plus 60, which is 240, then 360 minus 60, which is 300 degrees. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so these you have these kind of uh, questions in your book as well. Although not very, they're not very common, but yeah, just keep your eyes and ears open. The second you take the square root on both sides, you have a plus as well as a minus, okay? So we're gonna keep it till here only, okay? We're not gonna start graphs today. That's what we're gonna do in the next class, inshallah. We're gonna do trigonometric graphs. We're gonna do the basic version of trigonometric graphs. Then we will do the complex version of trigonometric graphs, and then we'll do the complex version of trigonometric equations, okay? And we'll uh, keep on doing degree and radian simultaneously. No, not on Saturday, on Tuesday. On Saturday, we'll have a class where we discuss problems, okay? Uh, Math-related problems. Some questions that you guys wanted me to solve. I couldn't keep a class last Saturday. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I think there are some APGP questions you guys shared in the group. There are some quadratic questions as well. So questions of all the topics that we have done so far. If you've been practicing on the side and you want help in them, you can bring them. So are we supposed <laughs> life problems? Uh, well, I'm not the right person to talk about life problems. Uh, Saturday at 5 p.m. Yeah, five to six. Are we supposed to send you questions beforehand? Yeah, ideally send it. Bef send them beforehand. Okay, so I can. We can save some time. I'll 
have the questions ready on my iPad. Okay. So we'll save some time that way. All right. So I will stop here. See you guys, inshallah, on Saturday. It's not a compulsory class. So only attend if you have any questions. Homework. Let me see if uh, we have done enough for me to give you guys homework. In fact, yes, I will. I will. We have done at least the basic trigonometric equations. I can give you homework of that. Yeah, I will. There will be homework, inshallah. Okay. So, yeah, I'll stop here. See you guys on Saturday. Have a nice weekend. Take care, everyone. Allah Hafiz.